Hi folk, broken caravan time again and what's happened this time is that the battery charger has died and so let's have a look at the tools we need and this is it, it's a number two posit drive screwdriver whatever you might need to disconnect the battery and then that's really it first before we go any further we need to understand why you need a battery and a charger in the first place it's a bit like the toilet system that you've got at home on your lavatory so why do we have a system there is because particularly in old houses the water pressure was so low and the water would trickle in never enough to flush a toilet but if you fill up the system at the beginning then to push a button you can draw on all of that current in one go and it works the same in a caravan. What we have is a charger that can feed at a particular rate into the battery and then your battery is able to make sure that we've got loads of current available to us at a certain times. When are those times going to be? Well those times are going to be when there's no mains attached so everything is dependent upon the battery and also when we're taking a huge load out of the battery but when the big problems come of either no mains power to provide that lower current or a really big demand then we need a battery and we need to keep it topped up. Okay so why does the system fail? Couple of reasons. First of all we could have killed the battery. Batteries are brilliant these days and they're much better than they used to be, but they really need to be kept pretty full all the time. What you don't want to do is to let them drain out. And a good measure of that is if the current, or the voltage rather, that they're able to deliver drops below 12 volts. At static, when there's no charger connected to them, they should sit at 12 volts and you'll have a little meter within your van which is telling you what the voltage is. If it ever drops below that, then you're actually causing serious damage to the battery. So we usually work on try and keep the battery at least half full. So what do you do if you're off grid? Well, great thing is a solar panel on the roof which can again trickle it back in, top it back up when it starts to get low. And in that case, we'd probably want to have a really big battery so we can make sure that we can sustain that 50% full and still meet our needs. Um, or occasionally, uh, if you're putting a really big load on, emptying it because you're moving the caravan, it's not connected to the mains, and you're moving the caravan, maybe a complex maneuver to get it in place using the movers. So if you've got a motor mover, that can be a particular drain on the system. How do we cope with this? Well, you've got to be aware that there are three classes of battery that you can get. There's what we call Class A, and these are really tough batteries, and they can cope with going offline for longer periods of time, and they can also cope with the heavier loads that we put on uh, using a motor mover. And so that's really a Class A. We've got Class B, which can do that occasionally, but you wouldn't want to rely on it and do it all the time. They usually have fewer side going up and down. Now, might go from 400 in a class A to maybe 200 in a class B, maybe less. And then you've got class C batteries, and that's for those of you that are really don't have a motor mover and you spend almost all your time plugged into mains electricity and just occasionally you might want to provide a little bit of extra backup because the power there's been a power cut and you need to maintain the lights or whatever but very low levels of use on the back that's a class c battery personally i wouldn't buy a class c i would stick with a class b and if i knew i was nearly always going to be online i'd just have a smaller battery, save some weight, but I think the Class C are really false economy in many ways. You know, they're probably £30 cheaper than a Class B, but they break very easily. Next thing, so why did my battery charger die? Well, what happened was that we were away at a festival and the solar panel that I'd got wasn't actually charging the battery and we just drained more and more and more down until we completely flattened the battery. It was five years old and they've got a life expectancy of about three to five years. You might get away with 10 as we did on once before if you look after it but we drained it down to nothing and then when I plugged it back in later on when we got to our next site what happened was that there was a lot of drain on it but the battery had actually got damaged we could never get it up really above 11 volts 10 and a half to 11 volts and it would just drop down straight away it had a dead cell in it that extra load of trying to put it on there I think just outstressed our charger and the charger died so we ended up with no means of charging it fortunately I had a portable battery and a portable charger so I was able to run an extension lead out to the other charger and that was because I knew at this festival we might be putting too much load on it and I wanted something there as backup. 
So a quick word on safety. We are dealing with mains electricity here and if you're not confident in what you're doing, although this is actually a really, really easy job to do, if you're not confident with working with anything that's, that's mains connected and tucked away out of sight and out of mind, then you may wish to consider getting somebody else to do it. But have a look at the video and tell me what you think really because actually it is really, really simple to swap. Okay, so here is the model number and you'll see it on the back here. It is a PS270. 6 1 BCSM. There's also a 2 model and this one is a 20 amp, okay, a 20 amp. So it puts out 13.8 volts at 20 amps. Make sure that the version you get is that. They do a 10 amp version for very small vans. I don't think it's worth swapping out for a slightly cheaper version. I do think it's worth going for at least 20 amps. The difference is that the 20 amp one has got a fan in it so that if it overheats it has a means of keeping itself cool if there's too much load on it. Okay, so where do you find the battery charger? Well, it's at the back of the fuse box. So here we've got a fuse box and as you can see it's got mains connection on it with some trips on the right hand side for the hot water and for the, uh, the charger and also the water heater. And yes, that's important, but what I think we just need to be aware of is that it is dangerous working with mains electricity. So I, I'm going to recommend to you is we turn the power off, we disconnect the whole van from the mains. That way you're not working with any mains electricity even 12 volts can be dangerous not so much from getting a shot but from if you short circuit it when you've got a great big battery on it that can be particularly bad so another recommendation I would make is remove the battery or disconnect the battery uh, but that is not entirely essential a very important point to note is that the charger and the water heater are on the same circuit so if you turn off the water heater or if the water heater is blown the chances are the charger will not work. Okay so to remove the unit what we have to do is to take this wooden surround out first of all. Everything is enclosed in this little plastic box so we need to remove this unit so that involves us taking out uh, the four, the two screws here and the two screws over there. We could just get away with taking these two screws out on the outer edge but then you're still working in an enclosed space so we want to give ourselves as much room as possible so take out the two screws that hold it at one edge and then those two screws are in special little fixers that can come in at an angle these two down here uh, let's see if I can zoom in on that so that little unit there enables the screw to go in at 90 degrees. As you can see, they've got a life expectancy of almost zero. And I think the bottom one has got a screw, but it's not even been done up. And then that, the edge of that piece of wood fits in a slot over there. So it's very easy to take apart. So there's four screws you need to remove. So in theory, the plastic box is supposed to be mounted onto this back plate by these four wood uh, screws that mount through the plastic. The reality is, on my one, every single one of them has broken off. And I'm not sure that anybody's ever taken this out before so my suspicion is it's just the weight and the vibration that snaps them off and in fact you can see there's a lot of sort of powder around here where that's just been rubbing and rubbing and rubbing so I suspect it literally just vibration because there's nothing supporting the box from underneath. Okay so as long as the power is disconnected there's much less danger of doing any damage or, or injuring yourself during this next phase so make sure the power is disconnected and if the battery is disconnected then it's pretty safe. Now it's possible to pull all the plugs apart and then remove this thing safely safely but we're not going to do that we're literally just going to pick it up and tip it backwards I don't know whether you can see that so we've now tipped it backwards in its in place and here is the water heater charger trip that is off because charger was connected to it and what we're now going to do is uh, I'm going to take these four screws out the front and remove those let's quickly do that now they're cross point uh, Phillips screws by the way in the box at the back the two long screws longer screws go in the front and two very short screws screws go in the side. We're going to undo these four here. We lift the front off, put that to one side, and we now have the unit exposed inside. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take the battery charger out. The power is off, I know that, and the battery is disconnected. So now I'm gonna pull out the power cable from the back, which is really stiff, and then we disconnect the white connector here. So the white connector is now disconnected, and 
that's where the 12 volt comes out and it's quite a simple little system it's got four wires two black and two red coming out of the charger and then there's a series of a white black red and yellow in the thing and you cannot by the look of it put it in the wrong way around so let's get this charger out the charger is not actually fixed it just fits in a slot so if you very carefully pull on it it will lift up and you can slide it out as one. We'll have a look at the dead one and we can see it's a bit black and heated. It's got written on here, it's model 2014. It's a 20 amp and UK voltage and the model number, if we look at it on the back here, PS, I'm assuming that's power supply, 2761BC. Here is the new one. So there's the new one underneath PS 2761BC SM. It's got added to it. But other than that, it looks absolutely identical in every possible way. The new one underneath the old one on top. And we're now going to try fitting that. In. So I hold the power cable and the white plugged end out of reach. This is all plugged in inside. I don't want to cause too much strain. I'm going to drop this in now into its appropriate slot. New one. It seems to fit in extremely well. That's it. Gone right the way through. I'm going to connect the this white lead. Okay, so when you connect this connector here together, make sure you get it the right way around. So the black and the black white that I've got here should connect up and the red and the red yellow should connect up together. And it should be impossible possible to get it the wrong way round and you may wish to remove the appropriate fuse which in this case is the third one down it's a 15 amp and it connects everything together so once you've connected that one I'm now going to connect in the mains here plug that in and now technically that is all back together again and I'm going to turn on the main switch still not connected outside and turn on these two inside and we'll see where it goes so there is no mains connected at the moment all of our switches are off master pump awning lights and I've just connected the battery outside and it says there's no power there I turn this on and and it goes up to 12 volts which is what the battery had in it so now the next thing is to connect up the main so I'm actually going to turn the master off again power is now connected and it is live I'm just going to turn this on and see what happens and we've gone up to 13 volt. It would probably go higher if the battery was completely full because it's a 13.8 output. So we now know everything is working. There's a charge there because it's above 12. So I'm gonna turn this off again. I'm gonna disconnect the mains, put it all back together again, and then we're done. So it's all reconnected, power is onto the van, power in the front here, all the switches are up, means the power is all on, my checker is over here, and now I turn this on, and we hear a little whirring of the fan in the charger, and it now says 13 volts, so now we can say that it is all done. Here's the unit that we got, it's made by Pennine Leisure Supplies, power unit transformer, 20 amp output, and the model number is PS276-1-BC, and then there's a couple of extra on the new one. So I hope you found that useful. And uh, I'm sure there'll be something else that needs repairing very soon and we'll get round to that when it crops up. But in the meantime, thanks for watching.